Violations on a major scale by Israel of international law about which nothing had been done. Nothing at all. In other words, we have reached, this was set up uh, three years ago, we've re reached a situation in the world in which one state, there are others, Israel does not have the monopoly on this, where they feel they can act with impunity and nobody will lift a finger because, as I've said, vested interests play too big a part. And we looked at the concept of apartheid. People have been reluctant to, as it were, apply these terms to Israel. People have been afraid, afraid of being bullied, afraid of being accused of being anti-Semitic, but it's got nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the rights of human beings. The apartheid system in Israel uh, has different shapes and forms toward different parts of the Palestinian people. While in the West Bank it might be very blatant and in Gaza, East Jerusalem, very blatant because it's under military rule, and they talk to us about the security, self-security of citizens. We are equal like any other citizen. 47 Palestinians were killed inside Israel by Israeli police, security guards, or soldiers. 13 of them were killed in 2000 when we went to the streets to show solidarity with our brothers and sisters in the occupied territories. It was when the, first, the second intifada started. 13 were killed. Until today, no one was convicted. The shooters are still free. The same with the 34 Palestinians who were killed after. So we have in total 47 in the last 12 years. In the 47 cases, only two of the shooters were convicted. And we, as South Africans who benefited from international solidarity, feel that we have to be in the forefront of the solidarity movement. And we feel we are not doing enough. There are businesses in South Africa that continues to trade with Israel. And we think that's a problem. But in today's world, the question of investment and money or lucre is more important than principle and solidarity. And the United Nations in 2003 actually asked the court about the separation wall, as has already been pointed out. It's not a security wall. That's how it's justified. But in fact, it's called the separation <coughs> wall. And what the court said was, yeah, we've heard all this about, you know, rockets and <laughs> suicide bombers, and th that is serious. But it does not entitle you to build a wall of 720 kilometers long, so high that obviously you can't see over it, and that goes through people's homes, communities, farms, all the rest of it. It's the most crystallized concrete form of apartheid you can think of. And if you throw a stone at it and you're aged 9, 10, 11, you will be picked up at night, you will be taken into custody, and you might remain in custody for up to a year before you're tried. We reside on 3% of the land uh, inside Israel, while we compose 20% of the population. We've been stripped our lands year after year, year after year. In, in 48, we used to own, to reside on 92% of the land, and today we have only 3% of the land. So this is the freedom of housing. And then they talk to us about the freedom of movement. Um, there has been many cases I personally was involved in documenting it, that Palestinians were denied entry to beaches, access to beaches, entry to bars, pubs, restaurants, because there is a certain of racial profiling. 
let alone the racial profiling in the airports that we face. Usually what was happening is that when you get to the airport and you're an Arab, there is certain <coughs> stickers that the, of the security officers uh, give to the uh, pa uh, passengers. So there is the white, which is to the good people. Now they are all white. Okay, then you find out that the uh, racial uh, profiling is going by numbers. On each white st sticker, there is uh, from one to six. So the good people take the one, the bad people take the five or six. This time, actually, I arrive and it's a totally different system because now they give everyone blue sticker. But there is a, a, a small blue, uh, not blue, yellow, sorry, small yellow sticker and big yellow sticker. I got the big so you would know <laughs> what the bad people will get. And what the I have no doubt that we have justice on our side. But you see, Israel doesn't listen to international law. It doesn't listen to human rights law, humanitarian law, or conventions. In South Africa, Israel supported apartheid South Africa more than any other country in the world. 35% of the armaments that South Africa received was from Israel in 1980. Very late in the day when the whole world started boycotting South Africa. It was Israel that was supporting the apartheid regime. Is that you refuse to participate in an illegal productivity coming out of Israel. And actions should be taken against the companies who are in fact upholding illegality. These are very simple issues but you need the courage because you might, may face bullying. You may face antagonism and hostility. But none of that is compared <coughs> to the daily agony, the daily anguish, and the daily death that occurs in Israel, Palestine. For example, Professor Falk, Richard Falk, who is now the UN Special Rapporteur on the Palestinian Territories, a professor of law from Princeton University, John Dugard, who's known as the father of human rights law in South Africa was the previous and have come to the conclusion that that particular convention on the suppression of the crime of apartheid applies very clearly, squarely um, with Israel for all these crimes they have committed. So the question of solidarity for me is about humanity. It's about uh, making us human and breaking down walls and borders very clearly, like South Africa, like the Spanish Civil War, like humanity's struggle against the US imperialism in Indochina, this is the moment of the Palestinian struggle. I think we all know that condemnations, statements by world leaders and governments will not lead, lead us anyway. I think these people who are uh, repeating the same rhetorical are the same people who are complicit with the Israeli continuous violation of human rights and international law, Geneva Conventions and you know, what have you, you can name all these violations and UN resolutions. Um, they support actually the occupation, they support Israel and that, therefore we think that the power is in the hands of the people. The power are in the hands of you and us to co-resist together. Any cause in the world, any oppression in the world is also our cause as Palestinians. And we want to co-resist with you. We want to be partners with any people in the world who are facing oppression because we all share the same values. When an occupation bombs cities, it is not self-defense. It is criminal. When a regime separates, segregates, and discriminates, it is not democracy, it is apartheid. Call it what it is. We have seen it before, we have fought it before, and we have bet it before. Thank you.